Hello there and welcome to the 8th episode of Tickets for Two. So for the last few days we've been in Vietnam and we've been arranging accommodation because we're planning to stay in Hanoi for the next full month. But in between the moments where we've been getting stuff ready and arranging accommodation and such like, we came up with the idea of making a video about Cambodia and our thoughts on it. So, let's talk about Cambodia. Cambodia is a country in Asia, obviously, which is situated in between Vietnam, Laos and Thailand. Its population is 15 million people, with one and a half million people living in its largest city and its capital, Phnom Penh. Other large town or cities include Battambang, Siam Reap, Kampot and Chinookville, all of which are more noticeably smaller than Phnom Penh. Cambodia has been a country as a fully independent nation since 1953 when France handed back its independence. Its major exports include rubber, fish, rice, clothing and footwear. If you want to know more about it, go on Wikipedia because that's where we found all the information about it as well. Now our first impressions were very good. We flew into Siam Reap, which is a beautifully constructed airport. Seriously, it's amazing. We had a fairly decent experience going through customs and it was very, very easy to get around Siam Reap. As a town, Siam Reap was one of our favorite places in Cambodia. So to begin the trip there was a very good place to start. We recommend that you do the same if you go into Cambodia. Population wise, the Khmer people are a very resilient and friendly bunch. While some of the people that we encountered didn't have much, they won't let circumstances stop them from what they need to do to earn a living. Many folks have shops, restaurants and other services actually made up in their own homes and it's a testament to their attitude as a nation. However, it's incredibly sad that as far as we can tell, they just don't get the government support that they deserve although there are NGOs and charities that are working towards changing that. Often, if you flash a smile at them, you'll often get one back. Also, being able to say a few basic words in Khmer, or the native language of Cambodia, such as a con, which is thank you when you're being handed back your change, will also give you the same results. Generally, they seem very pleasant and humble and like to have some kind of interaction with foreigners. It was quite a regular occurrence to have children and some adults just randomly shout hello at you down the street, which kind of makes a nice surprise. I will say one thing though, if you look vaguely foreign, you will get stared at by both adults and children. You will also be on the end of constant sales pitches, constantly. It's mad. Some of the Khmer people will see you as a dollar printing machine, especially if you're walking down streets where there's a lot of vendors or street markets and tuk-tuk drivers. Now the staring bit never really bothered me and the missus. We're both very tall and we towered over everyone while we were in Cambodia. But the sales pitches can get very tiring very quickly. If your tolerance isn't that high of sales pitches or having people constantly tout for your business, then you're gonna have a problem. A good example of this is when we were in Siam Reap, just by Pub Street, where there's literally hundreds of tuk-tuk drivers. While you're walking down the street, you will get asked by the first one, and you'll obviously say no or yes, depending on what you need. But if the guy behind you hears a no from the first guy, then they're just gonna constantly keep asking you. It was a bit like how we used to work on board cruise ships when people used to get off the gangway. We'd constantly ask people for photos, so we kind of get that general feel of what it was like now. For the more timid out there or the more shy, this can be something that could be a little bit daunting, I guess. As the same with any country, you will get bad apples. There are pickpockets and thieves, and they do especially come out at night, especially in the larger cities of, of Cambodia. The only real advice that we can give to you about this is just use your common sense. If you've got any bags, put them over a shoulder and underneath one of your arms so the loop goes right around your body. Or if you've got any kind of buttoned up or zip up pockets, then obviously use them as well. If it wasn't for that, Vicky would have had her bag snatched by a guy on a passing moped. Overall, the Khmer people have had to endure a lot in Cambodia's past, but they're not letting their past stop them trying to progress as a nation. We like them, apart from that on a moped. Cambodia's environment can be easily split into two sections. Beautiful and filthy. In Kampot, Kep, Otres Village and other rurally placed towns, you can easily describe the landscape as stunning. Otres Beach is easily one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever been on. And the islands and the surrounding landscape and environment just cannot be faulted. Geographically, Cambodia is beautiful. 
It's blessed with gorgeous mountains, some of the whitest beaches I've ever seen, some of the clearest oceans I've ever seen, and so much jungle that Tarzan would have a field day. They also have a good couple of national parks, such as Bakor National Park and Cat National Park, and these were very surprisingly well maintained, and Bakor National Park had plenty of park rangers being manned there as well. In general, Cambodia has got it all, but the only real big problem that they've got is rubbish. For all you Green Party members and environmentalists out there, you guys will have a heart attack if you walk down the streets of some of Cambodia's largest towns or cities. It's incredibly commonplace to see people throw empty cartons, bottles, cans, once they're done with them, wherever they just feel like throwing them. And I'm not a proper tree hugger, but that even shocked me a tad. As far as we can tell, there wasn't any kind of real system or kind of procedure to go and pick up rubbish and trash and empty trash cans, in the sm especially in the smaller cities and towns. We did see some rubbish trucks working on occasion, but this obviously wasn't enough for the large amounts of rubbish that you would see in Phnom Penh, for example. It's a sad sight to see, to be quite honest with you, especially when you see five accounts of fly tipping on your way back to your hotel via a tuk-tuk ride. This also obviously creates another problem. It's going to help generate the perfect breeding ground for rats and pests alike. Areas that have big stores or shopping malls are clean, however, and that's well, we believe it's because money talks. The sad thing is, is that this is something that can be fixed. But because Cambodia is one of the poorest nations on the planet, well, certainly in Asia, their priorities lie elsewhere. We feel that if they don't get their environmental policies in place or procedures in place, then they're gonna start fly tipping in areas that they don't particularly want it to happen. And that, in turn, is just gonna destroy, like Chinookville, Otres Village, anywhere there, where there's any kind of real natural beauty. In low season, or May to September, the weather kind of does whatever the hell it wants. Some days it can be the hottest and clearest day you can ever see in your life, and then other days it will rain so much that your room will flood. Luckily, no, it hasn't happened to us. If you're coming in between those times, for a relatively short period of time, like a couple of weeks, it will be commonplace to lose a good two or three days purely just because it's raining so much. During those days, you're just not gonna wanna leave your hotel room. Key note though, during low season, this is gonna be the best time to see some of the riverside attractions and some of the waterfalls. As during high season, some of these can just evaporate and disappear altogether. So if you wanna avoid doing that, do come during low season. Since Vicky and I are such cat and dog people, the next section is gonna hit on a major problem that Cambodia has with its strays. Dogs and cats can be found just wandering the street a lot of the time, and more often than not, they don't look like they're in good nick. While it's apparent that some of these animals belong to people, such as they're wearing collars and such like, there is clearly an attitude towards these animals that they are left to their own devices, which inherently is gonna encourage inbreeding, dirty in the streets, the spread of disease, and just generally overpopulating the streets with dogs and cats. There are some groups over in Cambodia that are trying to sterilize pets and strays alike, but the Khmer people just don't have the inclination to kind of follow that up. All the population is lacking is just a little bit of education on the matter, and probably the funds to do it as well. Their priorities are gonna lie elsewhere for obvious reasons. If you do come to Cambodia, please be open-minded that you are gonna see a lot of stray dogs and a lot of stray cats, and more often than not, there's just simply nothing that you can do for them. Money. It's the key to everyone's travel doorway. And regardless of your budget, you need to keep on top of that. Cambodia can vary incredibly on this factor. There are restaurants, amenities, accommodation establishments and tour services that are all tailored to specific markets. If you're planning to travel as how we've traveled, comfortable but on a budget, then you'll probably be surprised to hear that Cambodia is a little bit more expensive than what we first anticipated. Yes, accommodation can be incredibly cheap and it's very much a case of you get what you pay for. We have stayed at hotels that cost in between five to eight dollars a night, which are very, very basic, but clean nonetheless. Then we've stayed in hotels which are 10 to 14 dollars a night, which have a fridge to put a few bits and bobs in, are a little bit more sizable, and also has aircon, which can be an absolute game changer in Cambodia's humid climate. In the accommodation aspect, booking.com is gonna be your best friend. Do pay attention to the ratings. We didn't once, and it was one of the most unpleasant hotel stays we've ever had. Also, yes, food can be incredibly reasonably priced as well. Staying in Phnom Penh, 
pick a place this family run and two people can comfortably eat two meals and have two drinks for well under $12. Fancy eating in a tourist hotspot, however, then you can expect to pay more, certainly much more if it's an affluent area. All in all, it doesn't sound too bad, does it, right? But the moment that you want to go to some of its tourist sites or its attractions, Cambodia changes its tune slightly. This is where some, not all, companies and services try to take advantage of foreigners. Here's an example. During our time in Phnom Penh, we wanted to go and see the killing fields. Everywhere we went, the tour was advertised as $15 a person. That includes travel to and from the venue. Doesn't sound too bad, $30 for a tour for two, which can take up to about three or four hours. Until we then started shopping around, asking tuk-tuk drivers how much it would cost to get to and from the place, and he said it would be $12 for the two of us. That comes to a saving of around $18, and for that, you can get a nice meal out. If you're on a tight budget, this can make the world of difference. Shop around. Go and speak to tuk-tuk drivers if you're finding that some of the tour companies are charging a little bit more than what you was expecting. If you're absolutely adamant that you want to use a tour company though, try and go down streets that aren't particularly as busy or certainly the tourist hotspots. Hopefully you should get more of a reasonable kind of price. For us, tuk-tuk drivers was the way to go because you could haggle with them. There was no kind of real set price. The only thing you have to be aware of though is be reasonable with your haggling. They're just not gonna do a tour if they think that the amount that you're offering is peanuts. So like I said before, just be reasonable. Now, talking about tourist sites, let's talk about Angkor Wat. The price to go in Angkor Wat can be seen from two different sites. One justified, one extortionate. For the two of us, Vicky and I paid $74 for a single day pass. If it wasn't such a key sightseeing spot, then we probably would have thought twice about going. For example, the National Trust doesn't charge you 17 pounds each to go in one of their sites, let alone the best part of 70 quid. Having said that, they don't have the world's largest religious monument on their books. So it kind of evens out, I suppose. From the other side of the argument though, you could say that the price is justified because of the amount of restoration work but also the fact because it's such an iconic structure and it's the very essence of Cambodia's identity. So it, it, it kind of makes sense, I guess. Regardless of whatever side of the fence you sit on, ultimately for us, it was worthwhile. We also had the opportunity to go around and visit the temples with the same day pass in the local vicinity of Angkor Wat. If you're wanting to travel around the country and see a lot more of Cambodia, then you'll be pleased to hear that it's incredibly reasonably priced to get from one end of the country to the other. Trips from one city to another are incredibly frequent. And if they're not, the hotel that you're staying at will be more than happy to arrange transportation for you. Depending on the kind of coach that you're going on, whether it's just a very basic one, whether it's air conditioned, or even if it's a night bus, prices can kind of vary depending on your budget. We found that for about $20, you can get from one end of the country to another, or even enter another country. So if you're traveling from Cambodia and you want to go right via a road trip to Vietnam, for example, about 20, 25, no more than $30 should be more than enough to cover it. These travel costs were a lot lower than what we were expecting. And because of that, we had a result. Cambodia, comparing it to the first place that we visited, Thailand, is more expensive in its tourist sites and activities, but less so in certain other areas. Vendors and service providers see foreigners coming a mile off, and they will often just bump up the price because of this. Don't be afraid to haggle, and don't be afraid to negotiate on prices of tickets and such like. In a word, awesome. Cambodia was a wonderful experience to have, and we're so glad that we did it. Some of our most highlighted times was at Otres Village, where we just were able to chill out and just enjoy the absolute spectacle that was the Cambodian countryside. Phnom Penh, in our eyes, was ultimately disappointing, but this could be down to the accommodation that we had booked. Yes, we did see some things that upset us to a degree, but the Khmer people left a very positive impression on us. We recommend to any travellers that are going to Cambodia that they keep an open mind about the state of its people, the stray animals, and its streets. It isn't all sunshine and lollipops, as you can probably understand because of the background that Cambodia has. But if you look for its hidden gems and take it for what it is, then you will see things that surprise, intrigue, 
and we'll educate you about this region of the world. So that's all we've got time for this week. But if you're enjoying what you're seeing, don't forget to like, follow, share, and subscribe. All the details are down below. We are now in Vietnam, and we're in the process of kind of settling in for the next month. So sorry that this video was a little bit late, but there have been things that have been coming up and we have been doing them. So we're sorry again. Thank you very much for tuning in and we hope to see you next week.